In this question, Amelia and Bill each have $9,000 to invest. Their saving target is $20,000. In question part A, Amelia invests the $9,000 into an account that earns an interest of 7% per annum, compounded annually. We have to find the value of this investment after 5 years. There are two different ways to solve this question. One is to use the compound interest formula from section 1.4 of the formula booklet. This is what I will do here. The other option is to use the built-in financial application on your calculator. I will use this application in question part B so that you can see both types of solutions in this question. So as we said in question part A1, we have to find the value of the investment after five years. Let's substitute into the formula. We are looking for the final value after five years. The present value is $9,000. We'll multiply this by 1 plus R, which is the interest rate, so 7%, which is then divided by 100 times K, so the number of compounding periods per year. Here, we are compounding annually, so once a year, therefore K is 1. And in the power is the number of years, so we get 1 times 5 here. Let's use our calculator. We have 9,000 times, open parentheses, 1, plus, and here I will enter a fraction by pressing alpha, y, and enter. In the numerator we have 7, and in the denominator 100 times 1, so simply 100. Then we need to close the parentheses and raise it to the power of 1 times 5, so simply 5. We can now press enter to get the result, which is 12,622.96558. We are asked to give our final answer to the nearest $100, and since at the hundreds place we have 6 and the tens place we have 2, we'll keep the 6 as it is, so our final answer is $12,600. In the second part of this question, we have to determine the number of years that are required for Amelia's investment to reach her target of $20,000. We'll once again use the formula. The future value here is $20,000. This is equal to 9,000 multiplied by 1 plus 7 over 100 times k, so 100 times 1, which is simply 100. And since k is 1, in the power we get 1 times n, so simply n. To find n, we can graph, use the numerical solver, or use logarithms. Here, I will use the numerical solver. To do so, I will press math, and to get to the solver, I will press the up arrow once. Then I will press enter to choose the solver. We'll enter the left hand side, so 20,000 into the first box, and into the second box we'll enter the right hand side, so 9000 times open parentheses 1 plus 7 over 100, and to do this I will press alpha, y, and enter to put in a fraction. The numerator is 7, and the denominator is 100, and after closing the parentheses We'll put our unknown in the power, and for this unknown here, I will use X. Now we just have to press OK, and then solve, so basically the graph button twice. So we got that X, or N, is 11.8 years. However, since we are compounding annually, we have to round this number up to the next full year. Therefore we get that N is 12 years. An exam-taking tip to take away from here is that when you are entering fractions into your calculator, use the fraction symbol, which you can bring up by pressing alpha, y equals, and enter, because doing so helps you avoid mistakes in your calculator work. This might seem like an obvious and somewhat annoying tip, but I decided to include it here, because I've seen many, many students in the past use the division sign when working with fractions. In itself, this is not a mistake, but marks are often lost, especially on more complicated fractions, because when you use the division sign, 
you have to be very careful when you enter products into the numerator and the denominator.